Let's kick it. Hello and welcome to What's New in Windows Whistler 2296. Thank you for watching What's New in Whistler 2226, I'll see you in the next build. No, it's not actually as bad as that, although it is quite bad as, pa as far as new things go. The main thing I could find that's different in this build is that it's got a bug with the things that you pin to the start menu. If, for example, you right click on something and pin to the start menu, then when you open the start menu and try and remove this from, from this list, it doesn't work. So you can pin things, but you can't unpin things. So this is not delete or anything. So and click, pressing delete on the keyboard doesn't do anything. So that's broken. You can clear it back though to how it was when it started. If you don't type in reg re-edit and you type in reg edit, then it's under H key current user software. Microsoft, oh, too far. Windows, current version, Explorer, and it's start page. And what you need to do is clear this favorites change. I think if you've set that to zero, that gets rid of it. Nope. Nope. So you have to delete the favorites, that'll get rid of it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong one. I think it's progress crash. Then it's one of these three. What? I'm pretty sure that did it the other day. What? Oh, bastard! Hello and welcome to What's New in Windows Whistler Build 2296. Thank you for watching What's New in Windows Whistler 2296. I will see you in the next video. No, it's not quite as bad as that. Although it's quite lacking in new things. The pretty much only thing I saw was if you pin something to the start menu and it make it appear on the favourites bit at the top, then you can't actually remove it because it won't disappear. But never fear, you can actually get back to how it was with that not being there. If you go to regedit and HK current user software Microsoft Windows current version explorer start page and then what you need to do is delete these favourites keys and get rid of both of them. Then, if you open it up and it's refreshed, you go, oh no, it's completely disappeared, the favourites bit. So what you need to do is go into properties and then just OK and they'll be back. So that's how you can clear it. Unfortunately, that clears everything that you added there, so not just the last one. So, hmm, that's not the best solution, but it's the only, pretty much the only solution, unless the thing you add to the start menu has quite an easy identifier because then you can see it in here in the actual value of the favorites key like here you've got bits.link so you can see that that's the that's the thing that needs to be deleted and I guess I'd say all this stuff up to these zeros needs to be deleted and there we go so that now update that because we've changed it hopefully yeah there you go that's easily disappeared so yeah that's the, pretty much the only only change that I've seen in this build apart from the fact that the readme notes are now on the desktop that's pretty much the only other difference another change is that even though this is obviously beta 1 the main beta 1 that all the testers got is that some of the components have been moved well some of the components are from the NT build branch when most of these are actually from the beta 1 build branch which is what everything in 2287 was from now one of these components is imappy which is which as we know is the CD burning helper executable you can see there it used to be the build strings in it from the source of where it was like, built in that was beta 1 shell x and now it's nt shell x and as you can see them other two there yep that's it just those two and it's not 
loads of components. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's only ten of them. I counted them up in my. I've counted them up, and I actually looked through all of these files, all of these changes, and yes, it was boring. But yeah, one of the ones with the biggest, well, with the most build strings embedded in it is MSWA text. And there you, can, there you go, you can see there that most of them, well, it also was changed from beta 1 into NT. So yeah, it doesn't affect anything, it's just something I found that even though it's beta 1, some of the components aren't from the beta 1 build branch, they're from the main NT build branch, which is what all of the components in the next build will probably be from, since that's no longer beta 1, is it? The only other mid change in 2296 is in the CD recording tab. And I should, I should stop saying mid change because it's not really a major change, it's just this text at the bottom here. It says portions under license from Roxio. So now you know where Microsoft's um, CD recording came from. It was built by Adaptech and Roxio and with some bits handled by themselves. One of the things I sort of wanted to talk about, since we don't have many changes here, is something that's been in pretty much all of these interim versions, and that's this idwlog.dbg thing that you get in the C drive. It's a hidden file, so you won't see it unless you've got the hidden files showing. And yeah, you may notice it that it's there, and as you can see here, it keeps going up and up in size as it starts at well, right now it's at 2.36, if I refresh it's at 2.37, and it just keeps on going. Now, what is it? Well, IDW stands for Interim Developer Workstation, which means it's a build of Windows that is sort of stable enough for people in Microsoft to use, and that won't crash on them every two minutes. So let's just hope they didn't log out and press the button, because that would have blue screened. But anyway, yeah. And what this does is, well, it's created by this piece of software. This isn't, this isn't in 2296 because obviously that's the public build and there's no need to have that in the public build. It's created by this here, IDW log. And as you see, it's IDW log 2000 system client. And the author was Wally W. Ho. Or oh, oh, W Wally, or oh, I don't know, but yeah, and it sets up. It's set up as a service in the thing. I disabled it, so I've had to re-enable it for this. So it's not, I don't know if it comes up as IDW login tool, but it's actually installed as a service when you start up. But what it does is, I mean, as apparent to the user, is just update this file that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because it doesn't show any UI or anything because it's a service. So what actually does it do? Well, if you look at this, it's a DBG file. You might think, ooh, that's some sort of arcane file format file that I'd have no chance of understanding. But you'd be wrong. You'll notice that it's just a normal text file. And what it does is, well, it queries some system information. Let's make it a bit bigger. There you go, you see it's got the, the build and it's looking for other stuff like, well it's got a machine ID and it gets the username, the user domain, the architecture of the computer, the locale, some system information, the RAM size, the video hardware, network information, terminal services information, Hydra is the code name for terminal services. Um, yeah, and then what it does is, if we scroll down a bit, oh yeah, you can see, it tries to connect to an internal Microsoft computer called PMP Triage and the share IDW log WHSTL. And then obviously since that doesn't exist on pretty much anybody's network by default, it'll fail. And so it'll try connecting again without a username and password. And it'll still fail because it still doesn't exist. So then at some point it'll go stuff that and it tries to open a different when we test it yeah it tries to open it again but as a different user with a password and obviously it still fails and I think it looks for some other um, 
network computer share things to no okay well anyway it, keep, it just keeps doing that and keeps trying to connect to that thing forever and ever and it just keeps writing to this log that it's failed so that's why this log keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger now if you disable the service nothing happens you know it doesn't impact windows in any way it's just a bit of information but anyway the easiest way for you to see what it does when it actually does connect to this PMP triage computer is to change the name of your computer to PMP triage you can change it on a network but then it's a, you have to faff around with permissions you know on a different computer on the network but you have to faff around with permissions and users and stuff like that so it's just easier to do the one that you're on so you call it PMP triage then you have to reboot you click no because you first need to create a share called IDW log WHSTL I don't know what WHSTL stands for sharing need to share it and make sure yep that'll do and then you need to restart to make the name change complete so we'll see you after that okay so now we've rebooted so here we go let's see what it did and as you can see it popped out some sort of file with a weird name 2287 dash uh, yeah anyway let's just rename it to text so we can see what it did because it's a text file and here you go it's just loads of information about your computer well well it's loads of information about the computer that it was running on you can see it's got the machine ID the username that it couldn't get for some reason don't know why um, platform is still called Windows 2000 by, <laughs> by this so there you go even though it's 5.1 so I'm not quite sure why that's that but anyway yeah we've got the RAM the graphics type locale sound drivers net cards not sure what CPU 6 means but an unknown SCSI and some large number of infrareds so yeah and that's it just that file it just pops that file on the PMP triage server and then if we look at the services it will probably have deleted itself nope Anyway, well it stopped anyway so now it doesn't run and I think it sets itself to no it just boots up and hmm I'm not sure if it runs again after that I thought it deleted itself I'm pretty sure it's got code to delete the surface that it's running under and or sometimes it's in the startup folder as well so yeah I can run a bit of a experiment by restarting and see if it creates another one of those and yep after a restart you can see it has actually created another one and it will continue to create them so Microsoft servers would probably get pretty full with all these if a lot of people were using them in there let you start it and it will create another one so yeah so the best thing to do about it is just disable it because you know you don't need this and you don't need the information because you know the information but yeah it probably helped Microsoft figure out what sort of configurations the the builds were running on and stuff like that and that's going to just about do it for 2296 I shall leave you with some outtakes and I shall see you in 2416 a third look and feel change which on the face of it looks like a bug but really it's just a badly re-implemented feature is the hiding of the desktop icons now you might think how the hell can you bugger that up when it's been working for so long well they somehow managed to on the face of it it works fine because if you turn them off they disappear but then if you log out they've also fixed this piece so you can actually use the keyboard from after you've logged out now what? <laughs> how did that happen? that's not meant to happen a third look and feel change which on the face of it looks like a bug but in reality it's really just a badly implemented re-implementation of the feature is the hiding of the desktop icons Bollocks. 
well, what do I mean by that? If I open up Regmon so we can see when Explorer queries that key, then obviously I have to restart Explorer because it doesn't it does it on start up. And there's Explorer. What a genius. <laughs> A funny thing I did notice with this feature though is if you go to the HK local machine version, uh, desktop icons, yeah, see they're all here set. So if I just change one of them to make it display, then this happens. Nothing. Oh, hey, what? Why has that happened? It happened last time. Why is it? <laughs> yeah, that's why it happened last time. Why isn't it happening this time? Oh. Seriously, this feature has been the bane of my life. No, it's not happening this time. Try the second one. No, it says. Try them all. Let's see if that's. No, it's not happening now. Last time when I disabled them, I got the active desktop has crashed like screen thing. But now it seems to be working, which is weird. The only other thing I noticed in 22.8-7 is that there's a bug when you try and remove CDs from it. Now obviously there's a CD in here, it's the beat CD and that's all working fine and dandy. But if I remove the CD... Then it changes the icon, which is fine. But then Windows Explorer has sort of died because you can't right click on it because no happens. You can't click on it and get the you must insert a disk thing that doesn't pop up. Oh there you go, it eventually does. Why does it always make me into a light when I'm doing this? Seriously. I've just done this twice and it hasn't it's crashed both times and now I record it and it works. How does that work? You probably heard that. That's not played on this computer. In fact, that's played on the computer of the person who sent the request, and you get this dialogue saying, "Do you want to start the help session?" And obviously, if you send a request, you probably say yes. Oh, and then you get that. That's not popped up before. Oh. Oh, this is confirmation refused. I wonder why that happened. Now you probably heard that. That's not played on this computer. In fact, that is played on the helpers, helpies computer, the one who sent the request. And now, this dialog pops up as well. And it says, do you want to start the help session? And if you were in peril in, with your computer, you would probably say yes. Then if you click it... Why is it not working now? Oh.